It's happening. I told you this would happen. Uh, <laughs> Kodak are raising their prices again in 2022 by a lovely 20%. I told you it was gonna happen. What are we supposed to do about it? Just crawl up in a ball and cry about it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Initially, when I was going to make this video, I was going to make a whole video being like, see, I was right. Kodak doesn't care about you. Kodak is just trying to kill the industry and take money from you and be greedy, or whatever. But after watching Nico's um, video over here, it completely reframed um, my perspective on it. And it's actually really, really good. Watch that video because it might help you sort of understand the situation a lot better definitely for me i you know it completely changed my perspective on the price hike still not great though. i still don't feel super happy about it not all of us have the budgets of joe greer not all of us are paid to shoot film so what can we do instead obviously it's shoot digital there is one style of shooting digital that i feel comes somewhat close in terms of their shooting experience and also the look of it. For those of you who've been watching the channel for long enough and for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you would know that I adapt vintage lenses onto my Fuji X-T3. And this combination of vintage glass and a digital body kind of, you know, it doesn't, obviously it's not, it's not a one-to-one -one substitute for shooting film. It is a nice little balance between film and digital you get the convenience and the speed of digital the cost saving part of digital whilst getting that analog feel of manual focus and also those sort of optical imperfections of film you know if you don't have that budget to keep on shooting film this you know in the same quantities as you normally do then maybe now is a really good time to start shooting digital and so that you can still get that somewhat analog experience and also saves you from having to get a whole new set of lenses adapt whatever lenses you already have onto whatever digital body you want me obviously i adapted onto the xt3 because that's what i have most people would agree that Fujifilm cameras are the closest digital camera bodies to film, to analog cameras. Um, not only because of the look, but because of you know the way it's set up, the dials, everything's all set up like a like a film camera. And so when you combine that with a you know with a manual vintage glass lens, it does feel a lot more like film rather than digital, um, especially when you have to manually focus. For me personally, a Fujifilm body with vintage glass is the closest thing you can get to shooting film with a digital body. Secondly, the look. For most people, the reason why they shoot film is because they want the look. or oh, they want the pastel terms. They want the film look. And as we all know, the look of film Yes, a lot of it comes from the emulsion, but a lot of it comes from the glass. Every lens has its own unique flavor. It's got its own unique bokeh. It's got its unique sort of characteristics that sometimes you just, I don't know, you just can't describe. Like whenever I shoot with the 85 mm um, 1.2, immediately I know that I shot it with that, you know, with that lens. It's just, it just has a look. There's a reason why filmmakers, um, there's a reason why um, you know, Hollywood studios still use vintage glass even on their digital sort of ARRI cameras. It's because you just can't replicate that look any other way. A lot of the times you'll get that nice softness, you get that halation, um, even from the glass itself. Um, a lot of times when I shoot with the 85mm f1.2 or with what I'm filming with right now, the Canon FD 50mm f1.4 SSC, when I shoot wide open, I will often get like that glow, that halation, almost as if I'm shooting with like a Tiffin Pro, um, Pro Mist filter. And that just comes in built in. So even when I miss focus, I still like the look of it. Sometimes when I shoot purely digital, it's, it doesn't feel quite as rewarding, quite as satisfying as shooting with film, but because you're forced to slow down with a manual lens, 
you're forced to think more about it. You're forced to concentrate more on getting the focus right. And for me, that makes the shooting experience a bit more rewarding, a bit more satisfying. And then the look, you know, the look, you get those imperfections, you get those film filmic characteristics with the soft glow, with the unique bokeh, with that, just those intangible qualities that you'll only ever get with vintage glass. And then when you pair that with the Fuji film simulations and the film looks, you know, and then you add a bit of grain on top of that, you'll get a look that's pretty, obviously it's never gonna be exactly the same as film, but you're gonna get pretty darn close. On numerous occasions, I've had people ask me, oh, was this shot on film? No, it wasn't. Another reason to adapt vintage glass onto a digital body is the accessibility, the price. The, it opens up so many more options and possibilities. Vintage lenses are way cheaper than digital lenses. So for example, I'm shooting with the 50mm f1.4. To get a 50mm f1.4 in terms of digital, the, the Fuji digital equivalent of the lens that I'm shooting with now would be, let's say the 33mm f1.4. And if I'm not mistaken, that's about 500 pounds, so maybe $600. You know, that's, that's pretty steep. Even though that's pretty cheap, for digital lenses, that is still really expensive in comparison to the price of this vintage lens that I'm filming with right now. I got this 50mm f1.4 for about 100 pounds, 120 pounds. So it is almost five times cheaper than modern lenses. So with this lens, I'm getting a beautiful look that's unique. I'm getting an f1.4 aperture, so I'm getting incredible low light capabilities, but at a fraction of the price. And on top of that, the build quality of these vintage lenses are incredible. These lenses are built like tanks. They are incredible value for money. Obviously there are downsides to vintage glass, you know, you gotta be, you gotta know what you're buying, you gotta, you gotta look out for things like fungus, things like, you know, haze and lens separation, stuff like that. But generally, I find that eBay sellers, you know, a lot of you might disagree with me, but I have found that most eBay sellers are truthful and they are honest. And if they sell something that isn't in the condition that it was advertised as, then it's really easy to get your money back. eBay always sides with the buyer. The point of this video is that I don't want film to be the be all and end all. The reason, the reason why you do photography shouldn't be because, oh, the only reason why I shoot photography is because I want to shoot film. The whole point of photography is, in my opinion, it should be to be, to be the best photographer that you can possibly be. Just because film goes out of, you know, becomes too expensive or whatever, I don't want you to then feel like you can't be taking photos because that's totally not the case. You can definitely keep on taking photos and this combination of vintage glass with a digital body, I feel, you know, comes pretty darn close to that analog feel and analog look. Pick up my zine, London in Love. Link is in the description. Follow me on Instagram at Zane Reads a Photo. I post a reel every single day and they are hilarious. I'm not gonna lie, they are very funny. Subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And with all that said and done, boys and girls, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.